Hello everyone, welcome to Marlin Chess Kids. Today I'll show you the gameplay by Nico and Ryan. And this beautiful game complete in only 32 moves. And we'll see how the game's play. The game starts with the pawn to c4, knight 6, knight c3, e5. Then the white play knight to f3 and knight c6 was played then e4 and d6 and now the white continue to play with a d4 and here you have a very strong three point in the center of the square therefore the black need to capture the pawn and this is the first five move and you can see that the white has an edge in this game and the game continuing with the knight capture the pawn knight takes d4 and g6 was played then the knight capture the knight knight takes c6 and now the pawn capture back bishop take c6 and after this position you the black you have a double pawn in the game and this double pawn will be a weak structure for the black and after this the white continue to play with a g3 and bishop to g7 and prepare for a short casting now the white also do the same bishop to and prepare for costly and after this the black play a short costly also play a short costly and this costly is to avoid the king in the center of the board and this will bring the king to the side and will be more safe as it's being protected by the pawn and after this queen to e6 and here you have the first 10 move and the position is equal for both sides. Then the game continue with the queen to d3 and queen to c8. And this idea may try to exchange the bishop at g2. And after this, e5 was played and now the knight goes to d7 and after this the white play f4 to storm as the shot cannot come to the h3 as it's being blocked by the old knight and after this queen to a6 was played and here the queen trying to attack the pawn with the bishop and trying to win a piece after this queen to f3 was played and also the white also able to capture the pawn with protected by the b shot so in this game rook takes c6 c4 was played and now the rook to d1 and here the white keep on maintaining the pressure and after this if you the pawn at d6 cannot be captured the pawn as the rook is pinning and if the pawn is moved away then the rook you just capture the free knight so d5 was played and now the bishop to e3 bring up the more pieces and here you have can play rook a to c1 and attack the bishop
So queen a5 was split, and now rook a to c1, then the rook f to e8, and after this, the white push the pawn to attack the bishop, and now bishop to a6, and here come the another great move from the white with the knight sacrifice. So if the knight takes d5 is one of the great moves. After this, if you capture with the pawn, then the rook will just capture the pawn and attack the queen and also attack the knight together. A single move, double attack. And this is called a fork. And the black need to run away to protect the queen and the knight will be lost. And in the actual game, the black used the queen to capture the pawn, and now the rook just captured the knight. And now the first rook is in the rank 7, and now the second idea will be bringing another rook to the rank 7, and this rook will be able to attack the f7. So it is important to make sure that you have doubled up the rook and goes to the rank 7 and attack and have a swing at the rank 7 and here it will be easy to win the game. So after this, the queen just captured b3 and now the queen goes to f2 and this the bishop is direct attack the rook and also the bishop can go to d5 and attack the queen and also at the same time attack the pawn and you have another double attack idea so after this bishop b7 was played and after this the bishop just capture the bishop and the queen capture the bishop and now queen to a2 and trying to attack the pawn at f7 and check the king and will able to capture the bishop and go for a checkmate and in this position the black play rook to e6 and this is one of the tactical blunder and yet here the white is clearly winning in the game and after this, the white use the rook, rook c takes c7 and bring up another rook to the rank 7. And this will, in the rank 7, the rook is very fierce and will be winning by taking the pawn. So, after this, the queen goes to e4. And after this position, the white continue with the rook takes f7 and now the pawn is not protect the rook and the rook also can capture the bishop and check the king and then the queen also able to attack the rook and here the white sacrificing the bishop for the attack. So after this, the queen just capture the king and check. And at this moment of check, the white need to make a very critical move. If one of the move is wrong, the white will be losing. For example, if the king move to H1 and this game will be a drawish game as the king will just continue to check. Then if the king goes back to E1 and the queen will just continue to check at E1. So at this moment, the king to g2 will be the 
best move and therefore the queen cannot continue to check and if the queen continue to check at e4 then the king will just move to h3 and this will prevent further check from the black and back to this position After this move, the black play a bishop to f8, and with this, the white mid in 5. I give a couple of seconds to figure out the continuation of white to play and win the game. Well, congratulations for those who found the answer and for those who like to enjoy the show, here are the brilliant moves that the white played and made in 5. The brilliant move is to move the rook to g7 and check the king and go for a sacrifice. And in the actual game, the bishop captured the rook and now the queen continues to attack the rook and check the king. And after this, if the king moves to f8, then you have a queen to f7 check mate. And in the actual game, the king moved to h8, then the white continue to play rook to c8 and check the king. And this rook is protected by the queen. And now again, if the bishop block the check then you have a queen to f6 and check the king and now if the king goes to g8 then you have a root queen takes f8 check mate so in the actual game after the root check the black capture with the root and now the queen just capture back the rook and continue to check and now if the bishop block then you just have the queen capture the bishop and checkmate and move 32 so back to this position at here if you capture with the Queen. Queen takes e6, then you will become a position of equal as the queen can continue to check the king and the king if moved to g1 then the queen can go to e3 and check and the king goes to g2 then the queen continue to check again. And if the king goes to g1, then you can go to e3, and now the king goes to g2, and will be a drawish game. And if the rook capture with the rook capture the h7 pawn. And the game will be repeat as the same queen to e4 check, then king to h3, then you can go to queen to h5, continue check, and g4 to protect, then queen to d3 check, and king to h4, and now rook a to e8, and have a double rook, and the position will be drawish with the black, have the extra shot. So, in order to prevent the situation, uh, another suggestion you can play is the bishop takes e5, and this may better for the black.
and after capture the pawn and if you capture the rook and now you have an open double check with the rook goes here and check then the white the black will just continue to go to queen e2 and check the king and if the king move to h3 then you can just move the queen to h5 and have a perpetual check such as king to g2 and then queen to e2 again and king to h3 then queen to h5 then king to g2 and you have the queen to e2 and this will be a perpetual check and will be a draw and if you continue to check the king if the king move to g1 then the black will be winning with the bishop check and this you can see the bishop is checked the king the queen is controlling the square and the queen also controlling the kings to go up and if the king goes to h1 and you have a simple queen check as the king cannot move to anywhere and with this thank you